Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to apply um, some materials and textures to your model. Um, this is quite a um, an important part of 3D modeling, and there is a lot to render in. So this will just show the basics. So first, we're going to come up to the top here, and you will see the tab Applications. Now, when we go in there, we are looking at this section here called the Render Studio. So once you click on Render Studio, it will open up a different part of the program. Now along the top we have scenes, appearances, which are your materials, um, different orientations that you can view your model in. Then we have perspective view, which is a more realistic view of your model. Um, real time, uh, this button um, when it's on, will show what settings you've applied and then here I will talk to you about how to apply and set the render. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go across to scenes. Uh, this is the environment that we're setting the model up in. So I'm going to click on scenes and just briefly, there are lots of different scenes. Um, two, three, six, seven, eight, ten, ten different scenes um, that you can see there. Um, that are default. Um, so if we just click on one here um, and that will apply that scene to my model. Um, and then we can rotate it down. So it looks a bit odd. It looks like my dice is floating in mid-air. Or if I turn it round now it's sitting on a surface. Um, so we can change these scenes, we can edit these scenes. Um, and we can then go in and play around with different settings. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is a scene that I know works uh, very well. I'm going to use the default um, Creo default scene. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to double click and that will apply the scene up here and to the model. I'm then going to go in and edit the scene. And my advice here uh, for a really good effect is not to play around with um, too many of the settings because they are they are pretty good. Um, but I will check, go to the background um, and this has a kind of gray, very grey background. I want to make this um, um, white. So um, I'm going to click on the image. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't want to image. So I'm going to go to background and I'm going to do the drop down and just choose color and the default color will be white now you can change that color if you wish but now my background is predominantly white and i can have some shadow here um, it gives a nice reflection onto the surface so I, i've used these a lot with my students um, to get a really good effect the reason why i choose white is because the viewer is then focusing on the model and not what's going on in the background so you can get a really good finish on here. Now at the moment, we're still in our default material of grey, so it looks a bit boring. So we're going to apply a material to it. So I'm going to now go ahead and close that. I've set the background to white. I've set my scene. I'm now going to come across to appearance. Now, at the moment, this is the material that is set. So it's the standard grey material. If you click on the down button um, of So if I click down, um, you will see that you have lots of different appearances. Um, this is what is on my model at the moment. If I click on any of these, it will go to here as a material. So if I hover over, you will see we have different ones, uh, ceramic, um, leather, glass, aluminium. Now there are lots of different materials and to play around with the settings to get it to look like a material can be quite challenging. So these are your defaults and then you can start to edit them. So I'm looking for a metal, okay, a standard, uh, an aluminium. So I'm going to go up to here and choose the PTC metallic aluminium. I'm going to uh, double click it and it's now appeared um, in my appearances. But we have a window up here asking uh, me to click on something. So 
I'm going to, I've chosen the material, I'm going to click on my model tree, and I'm going to click on dice part, which will select the entire dice. Now, if you see here, it's now selected. I'm just going to turn off real time so this moves a bit quicker. Um, so I've selected the dice part, I've selected the material, the dice part, and then I'm going to click OK. That is going to send the aluminium onto my model. So now I've applied. If I now go back to the appearances menu, you will see that it is on the model. Okay, if I now turn on real time, we'll see what we get. It will give us a uh, realistic uh, view. So you can see some reflection here. We've got lots of reflection going on here and here. And again, you can rotate that model and um, see, get, get the required view that you want. Okay. So um, now what I am going to do is play around or show you how to edit uh, some of the settings. Um, so in materials, I have this, I can right click and I can now edit that particular material. So the standard is it's fully glossy. Well, glossiness is up very high, so I can reduce the glossiness. And become um, the, the further I go to the left, it become more of a matte finish to it. Um, but in here, you can also change to different materials, and then you can start to edit. So if I go, let's say, to glass, um, then you will see the change, and then you will have to play around with these settings, um, and you will have to probably change the color uh, to get a different effect. These will take some um, experimentation and I encourage you to experiment with different settings. In this video I'm just going to show you some basic uh, metal finishes and some uh, print finishes onto the bolt. Okay, um, I can also change the texture. So I can um, go to here um, and we can um, play around with different settings of textures of the metal um, but for now I'm going to turn that off I'm going to stay with quite shiny aluminium um, so I drop the glossiness a little bit and then I'm going to come out of the appearance editor okay so I have a metal applied I'm now going to come across to do a render uh, this will create a JPEG file um, that will s I can um, save into a particular folder and then bring into my portfolio. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the render uh, options and here um, we can open up render settings and remember we have real time set so we can see what's happening in the window. So now um, we can turn uh, deselect use real-time settings and I'm just going to show you now um, we are in basic this setting if I move up you will see it changes for product and things are diff different things are changing shadows global illumination ground illumination uh, caustics and interior mode so as I go down put interior we're getting a lot more light bouncing onto the surface and hitting the model um, so you need to play around with these um, and decide which one uh, is most suitable to you. As you go down towards full simulation, a lot more is happening, uh, a lot more reflection, illumination, refraction. So um, you have to play around with those. And obviously, the more you play around, the, the longer the rendering may take. Um, I'm going to just set it at product. Okay, it's a, a lot more... Um, surface I can see some reflection here now as we move this slider this is the quality of the rendering it's going to take more time to do those calculations so I'm just going to leave it low for this video but you again play at the top this is the size this is uh, 1920 pixels by 912 it's very high uh, so 
I'm going to just reduce this to um, a lower size just for this. And now I'm going to tell Creo where I want to save this image. So I'm going to, I've created a folder in my Creo folder. Um, so I'm going to, and I've called it uh, renderings. Uh, so I've got it in here, Creo renderings and dice renderings. Now I've already done uh, free. So I'm going to call this Creo 4 and I'm going to save it in that folder. And now I'm going to press render and it will do the rendering for me. And it's now finished and I'm back to real time. So I can go to that folder, uh, Creo uh, renderings, go to my renderings folder and there is Creo 4. And we'll open that. And this is my rendering, which I've just taken. So that can be brought into a portfolio, cropped. Um, and so reasonably happy with that as a, a metal or aluminium object. Okay, now what I'm going to do is show you how to apply some colors to different parts of the model. So I want to put red dots on all my dice, but leave the rest of it as aluminium. So. I'm going to go over to appearances and I'm going to find a red plastic. Okay, there's red plastic, there's plastic, I can change it. So I'm going to double click that. It goes into my appearances here. I'm going to turn off real time rendering so that I can see my model. And now I'm going to, it uh, shows you a paintbrush and I'm going to select that inner surface. So I'm going to click on that and then press OK, and it's applied the red plastic. I'm going to edit that after. Um, now again, choose the paintbrush, click on it. Now all five dots are highlighting because they were drawn together. And I'm going to press OK, I'm going to rotate the model around, choose the material, choose the dots, press OK, rotate round, choose the material, choose the dots, press OK. So this allows you to do any part of the model with a different material. Okay, choose that material. Um, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose a different material. Choose that. So I've put the green one on the number six. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in and edit these. So I'm going to right click and edit that green. And I want that to be a plastic. Um, and I'm going to leave that. So set it. I'm going to right click. Um, I'm going to right click. Can I now change that one? Yep. Um, I'm going to change the reflection color of the red up a little bit towards the white because plastic reflects more natural white light. Um, and then I'm going to close. So I've now applied some colors to my dice. I'm now going to um, turn on real time and see where my model is. Sitting on the number six, so number six rendered on the surface. I won't see that in this render, um, but so you will see. I will just see the um, the red dots. Um, let's put that more in the centre. Uh, I'm going to put perspective view on. I've got a nice reflection on the surface here. I like that view. So I'm going to go to render. I'm going to go ahead and choose browse. Um, I'm going to select Creo 5 as a render now, save and select render. So that will be applying the same settings as previously. Um, I better check, uh, yeah, product. Again, I might go in here and deselect. Let's go to interior. Okay, a lot more bright light. Browse, call it Creo 6, save render and now I'm getting the interior rendering uh, 
um, which is bouncing a lot more light off the surface and hitting your model. And now I'm going to go to the folder, um, to my render folder, just to see um, what has come through. And we've got Creo, so five and six. Five was the product design, um, the product setting, so not as much light bouncing off. Um, and then uh, number six was interior. Um, a lot more light bouncing off, a lot brighter surface, so this could be cropped down 